Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. It's Nina with Passion Squared. I'm so happy you're here today because we have an incredibly special guest who I believe this is Danielle's third time on the pod. Uh, Danielle is the creator, leader, and owner of Radically Curly, an employment-based salon in Las Vegas, Nevada. Danielle, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Nina. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. I love this space. Thank you for having this space. I love this space too. And I love you in this space. We have so much to catch up on since you've been on last. Uh, First of all, congratulations on opening the new location of Radically Curly. You moved from a quad suite into the most epic building. Yes. Can you share a little bit about that, that experience? What inspired you to make the move? Cause that's a big move. You know, what inspired me to make the move was really our community had grown so large. Our curly community reaches past our, our borders. (laughs) So not only did our community grow, but the space was becoming smaller. We had four chairs and we had had at the time six stylists. So we were trying to figure out our schedules and it just became, it wasn't working with what my ideal work schedule was, which was closed on Sunday, Monday and open Tuesday through Saturday. So we needed more, we needed to we had maximized our space as much as we could, basically. So we needed to grow. We needed to stretch out and bring in more styling stations so that our stylist would be able to have space to do what they needed to do. We needed more shampoo bowls. We only had two. And Sola was great. Sola truly served its purpose in our business. I created Radically Curly at Sola Salons. You sure did. And yes, and with the help of Passion Squared and learning how to, you know, create all of the branding and everything like that, it was a success. So because of that, I had to expand. I had to move out. That was the next step. I love it. Can you share a little bit about, before we get into like more stuff, tell us a little bit about the Radically Curly brand. What inspired the brand? What is the purpose behind the brand? Well, what inspired the brand is curly hair. The The industry really had missed out on an opportunity to embrace naturally curly hair over a decade ago. So I saw that as a problem and I knew that I had some tools that I could share to provide a solution. And I knew that I had already been doing curly hair with just asking my clients, Hey, you want to style your hair curly today? And I had meetup groups where I was teaching people in the community how to work with their curly hair. Y'all, this was before we even had curly hair classes or curly hair products that are sold at consumer-based products right now. Mm-hmm. So I really took charge. And I know that there are other stylists like me, OGs like me, <laughs> who were really trying to make this movement happen. And I'd like to say that I felt that in the, the West Coast region, we really didn't have a lot of representation. So I decided to open a salon that focused on naturally curly hair that where anyone, no matter what their cultural background is, no matter what language they spoke, no matter what shade, you know, black or brown or whatever, whoever they are, you could come in no matter who you are, and sit in our chair, in any stylist chair, and be served. And that was our main backdrop of our problem back then, was that 
the industry looked at curly hair as, I hate to say it, but it's just true, as a Black thing or as you could only get your curly hair taken care of if you went to a Black hair salon. Well, we're way past that now. And I knew that back then, my inspiration was to create a safe space where anyone could walk in and be served. At that time, people like myself were getting turned away from salons when when we walk in with our natural hair or we get the little side eye look, you know, uh uh-oh, here she comes with all that hair. So I knew that I had a purpose to fulfill. I knew that with all of my background and all of my education and training that I had received, not only from being brought up in the business to learning from Aveda to taking what I learned on my own and then creating my own curriculum, I knew that I had something to offer. So that's how Radically Curly, the the purpose of Radically Curly was to serve a multicultural community so that everyone felt safe in, in our space, as well as hairstylists being able to come in and work in a team environment that anyone could come in and work in our environment. So that's really the backdrop of who we are. I love it. I love it. (laughs) I know that, you know, one of the things that I remember us talking about uh, quite a while back and you've shared a few, um, a few stories on social media about this over the years is teaching parents to take care of their kids, naturally curly hair. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, it's gotten a lot better, Nina. We have a a large client base that we have parents, guardians, siblings, people who are coming in to Radically Curly to receive knowledge on how to care for their little one's hair. And now... I always take the opportunity when I can, because I'm still behind the chair, happily behind the chair working. But whenever I have the opportunity and I see uh, someone that is young in the chair that's, that's maybe closed off or really scared to be there and not really sure of what to expect, I go over and I, I kneel down and I look them in their eye and I tell them that I created this space for them. I let them know that Radically Curly was built to serve them and that they're in a good place. We're going to teach you how to work with your hair. And just like doing your homework, the more you practice, the better you'll get. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with your hair. I'll find a way if they're in sports or if they're in cheer or something like that. I'll say, hey, Do you have to practice at it? Or or I'll say, are you good at it? And they'll say, yeah, I'm pretty good at it. And I'll say, well, did you have to practice to get good at it? And they'll say, yep. And I'll say, it's the same thing with your hair. You were born with this beautiful, glorious hair. And right now it might be hard for you to work with your hair. But if you keep practicing at it, it'll get easier and it'll get easier. So my job as as the salon owner And your stylist here today is to give you the tools that you need to help you continue to practice. And as you get older, you'll get better at it. And it's it's this confidence that they start to build. And then at the end of their service, usually I'll come over and say, so how was it? How do you feel? And they'll tell me, I love my hair, <laughs> you know, so I so- love when you all post that. I, I literally like ball my eyes out every time yeah. I see one of the one of the little ones just like yeah. feeling so beautiful. Or or when they say my favorite part was getting my hair washed. <laughs> uh huh. Well, I mean, yeah. smart kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same. Or- I would got one more thing. I had a client the other day where she had her little one. And when I was talking to her daughter, the mom cried, the oh. mom cried. So I was like, yeah, this, it's moments like this. That is the reason why we're here, you know, because we're doing more than just hair. We're building people's confidence. You absolutely are. 
You absolutely yeah. are. You talked about solving uh, the the primary problem that the radically curly brand was solving. And speaking of problems, solving mm-hmm. problems, mm-hmm. what I want to kind of go, I want to go back to the, to the new space. What are some of the lessons and surprises you had moving into the new epic radically curly building? <laughs> Well, I, the lessons I have for anyone that's wanting to have a traditional salon space is, yes, I have an amazing internal team. I have my group of stylists and we support each other. We're there for each other. But as an entrepreneur, business owner, I need an outside team. And I didn't know that initially. Years ago, when I was trying to do this, I thought it was just as easy as going to open a solo salon suite, having a a traditional salon space. I didn't, I didn't know. I was really clueless to that, you know, and growing up with my parents, my parents having hair salons, I didn't know that it was hard like that for them either. You know, I was I was a child. I didn't know. So some of the lessons, the hard lessons that were very clear for me is that I needed a business attorney. I needed a CPA. Um, You want to make sure that you have a great relationship with your bank for your business banking. I knew that I had a budget but I didn't realize I was going to go over my budget. And I had to kind of scramble to find additional funding at towards the end, but I made it happen. I I, I made it happen. Like it was supposed to be, it was meant to be. Um, Also finding a great contractor was key. The salon space that I'm in was already a hair salon, but it had been there for like 25 years. And it was pretty, pretty much, it had good bones, but it was very old. Like it hadn't really been upgraded besides the floor. And the floor was just tile. It it wasn't, you know, anything like really luxurious. And I wanted luxury for my community. I knew that I was used to luxury, so I was going to create luxury. So having a contractor that you have you you meet you meet in the middle is key like sometimes you're not going to be able to get everything you want when you're building out and you you have to sacrifice some of the stuff that you ultimately wanted and then redesign so our design for radically curly was my vision and it was my design and thankfully you we have options where you can go to furniture companies and 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 purchase furniture and get like small business loans to purchase the equipment that you need. So there's things like that that I wasn't really preparing for that came at me later. And then another thing that really threw me for a loop was when you sign your lease, like this is this is a big deal. <laughs> it's it's like it's it's um different from signing a solo salon suite. Oh yeah. And there are these increases that happen each year, which I'm already in that mode, but thankfully we're doing okay. It, it's so there are these things that you you have to really learn about in order to open a salon. Another example is the signage. The signage to put your sign on a building is not inexpensive, guys. This is no, an investment, not. you know, and it's it's something that you can't take with you if if you decide to to move. You know, it's these are all things that are investments and that are a big deal. And it having a good strong support system like having your attorney, your accountant, you know, people like that on your outside team is so helpful because without that, 
you're just going to be just kind of wandering around, figuring out what to do and where to go, as well as having a real estate agent, a commercial real estate agent. Uh, that's what really helped me initially find our space. And, and we, we had decided like last minute that this was the space because this space just became available just like that. And so when it became available, I was like, oh, yes, yes, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, after waiting, you know, for months and months and months and months to try to find something, it's, it's really a challenge. All of that, <laughs> all, all of, that. of that, you know, we, we talk often about doing the hard work upstream or fixing the shit show downstream. And that's such a great example of that is, is having that, you said having that outside team, you know, even something as simple as like a bookkeeper, uh, you know, I speak with a lot of people in our community, you know, and it's like when they're just getting started, when they're, whether it's a suite going independent or, you know, a, a standalone, more traditional salon. And so we start talking about, you know, profit and loss statements, stuff like that. And it's like, are, is your bookkeeper giving those to you every month for you to review? And they're like, uh, I don't have a bookkeeper. So I understand how excited we get about the decor and the front desk and the paint colors. However, listen to Danielle, listen to Danielle. Yeah. It, this is so much more than, than a cute shampoo bowl. Yes. That comes last. <laughs> it really, it really does. So where do you spend, uh, where do you spend most of your time when you're working on the business? You said that you're still buying the chair, which is so great. Uh, the times that you're not, and you're working on the business, where, where do you kind of spend your, where do you spend your time? So in terms of working on the business, yeah, I have, um, and at home, I'm at my desk right now at home. Um, I also spend a lot of time on Mondays, like today doing business work. So today is like my payroll day. Um, I also have an office at the salon. And sometimes I'll just go to the salon and just sit in my office where it's just quiet and no one's there and I'll work because sometimes I get distracted at home, um, not from, from anyone at home, just because I see things that I need to do at home. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if I'm at the salon, I focus on things that I need to do at the salon. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I do. How involved are you in the marketing of, of the business? I'm very involved. I actually love the marketing piece. I think because of Passion Squared, I love the social media marketing piece of it. But I recently, I recently let go of that and, and had, I have someone that's working on it for me. And um, it's, it's been, a, it's been very helpful taking that off of my plate um, and it, it has allowed me to have a little bit more peace in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but because it, it just, I, I didn't realize how much anxiety it gave me doing the social media piece of it. And although I loved it, I, I just, now that I'm, I, I'm stepping away, I've stepped away from it and I see someone else working on it for me who knows us who actually did work for me as a stylist in my salon who has now retired from working behind the chair so she understands our business model and she knows like you know all of the booking and all of the things and all of the explanations of what we do so that made it a really easy transition but um I'm so grateful that I don't have to spend all that time figuring out what goes where and what, what I need to say and, <laughs> and what, what song is every now and then I might post something and then I see it doesn't do that great. So then I archive it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll just leave that to my girl. <laughs> well, whoever is handling it is doing a great job. Radically yeah. curly is, is so the brand is so clear online and I just, it's, it's so, I love following you all. Um, how do you, how 
do you attract new clients? You know, it's really word of mouth more so. We have, I have noticed a big transition in how things have been over the last 10 years where it was, oh, I found you guys online. Now we're hearing, um, my friend goes here or, oh, I was at the doctor's and they, the nurse that has curly hair told us to come here. So we're getting a lot more word of mouth and I love to see that transition. It, there's just something about getting a referral from someone versus the social media consumer is different than the referral consumer. And the biggest difference that I can see is that sometimes that social media consumer, I want to be careful with my choice of words, but I, it takes them longer to book or to, to make a decision to come in. So they've been following us for a really, really long time. So we'll hear that consumer say, yeah, I've been stalking you for years. And I, you know, I'm like, well, what took you so long, you know? So sometimes it takes that person, not all, but some longer versus the referral consumer is like, they, they see the person sure. that referred them and then they're trying to get in and they're just so happy, you know, when they finally get in. I mean, that really tracks though with w whether it's online or offline, we trust our friends and friends mm -hmm. could be friends, community, acquaintance, you know, we trust those, those real life referrals, even if they're happening, whether they're happening online or off versus what you were saying, the people that just discover radically curly, let's say on TikTok, who have no relationship to an existing client. I can see that difference. And I know you're not alone in that for sure. Which, yeah. which we always, it's such a good reminder. I'm so glad you brought that up. We social media is never going to replace offline word of mouth, right? Word of mouth is word of mouth and you know, it's online and it's offline. How, speaking of time, uh, how do you practice healthy boundaries as a leader? Like how do you take care of yourself? You have so much on your plate. Yes. So Healthy boundaries, what I've learned through Passion Squared. Um, healthy boundaries are for me. And saying no is a full sentence. <laughs> and I teach that and, and coach to that at the salon. For example, I'll just give you a quick example. We have someone that comes in that wants a color that's just on there's no way they can get that because of the condition of their hair. And they're basically just saying, oh, but I want this, I want that, and I want that. And I've taught my team to just say, no, not at this time. We're not able to do that. And because I'm teaching my team that, I have to also practice that. Mm. So there, there are things that I that I have, am doing and it's it's getting a little bit easier for me. Like, taking social media off of my plate. For me, that is me giving back time to myself. Um, having my accountant, my CPA, send me those reports, that was taking something off of my plate. But another thing that is really helping me to give back to myself is just being trying to be healthy so that I can be here to watch my team grow and to reap the fruits of my labor. And how I'm doing that is I'm just trying to practice more self-care and not do things that make me feel unhappy. I want to do things that make me feel good. And that is just giving a little bit more time to myself. So I take Tuesdays off and Tuesdays, is a big day for the hair salon. You know, it's the, well, for a lot of hair salons, that's the start of the week. But I am trying to to get better at <laughs> taking all of my Tuesdays off. But sometimes I do have to work on a Tuesday. And when I do, I feel it because I'm still working behind the chair. And Tuesday through Saturday is usually my schedule. But now I'm trying to give myself more time for Danielle. And, and that's, 
a challenge, but I'm working on it. I love it. And it's a rhythm, right? Cause yeah, it is. you're the, you're the owner. You said, you know what? I'm responsible. You're, mm-hmm. th- you know, so yes, of course there will be moments. And, and that's why I'm such a big proponent of rhythm. Mm-hmm. So we kind of soften the expectations of like that black and white thinking, the absolutes every Tuesday is going to be off. And it's like, you know what? Maybe not every, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that most aren't available. And right. so and that really like helps us kind of be like, okay, okay. I'm okay with this one, this one Tuesday. Right. I love that. Is there a message that you would share with your younger leader self, your younger stylist, owner, leader self? Yes, it would be to slow down. Mm. I love that. Tell us more. I was in such a hurry to build this empire, <laughs> to, to build this brand, to, to do everything right now. <laughs> like I wanted it right now. And rushing really cost me. Mm. It cost me my mental health. It, it cost my physical health it it cost me a lot of uh, loss financially um it I lost a lot of time because I was backtracking trying to make up for things in in situations where I lost staff and it, it was it was a rough time period for me my younger leader self I would say slow and steady re- wins the race with knowledge and preparation. So don't don't just sit there and wait for it to come. Work towards your goal, set small goals, and then you can start to see the bigger picture. But for me, I was in such a hurry to do it. And I, I just got so far ahead of myself. I, I saw the outcome and I was already at the finish line. Instead of taking those small steps and understanding that there was going to be a failure or there was going to be a hurdle I'd have to get over because those things come like life, life's us. Mm-hmm. And you have to be ready for that. So just slow down. <laughs> Do you have a favorite quote? Oh, I have so many. Uh, let's see. Um, hold on. Let me look real quick. Yeah. Let me look at my quotes, my quotes list. Um, I love okay, you here have we a go. quotes list. I do. I do. Also- just one moment. <laughs> Let me open my quotes list. Um, <laughs> the greatest act of self-love is to no longer accept a life you were unhappy with. That's who, the quote. Who said that? By Brianna Weiss. Wow. Mm-hmm. Can you repeat that? The greatest act of self-love is to no longer accept a life you were unhappy with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> talk Love. about my younger my younger self. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> where can is it, speaking of social, where can, are, is, are you even online anymore? Where can we find <laughs> radically curly on the social? It's it's radically curly at Radically Curly on Instagram and Facebook. It's uh, Radically Curly Salon as well as TikTok is Radically Curly Salon. And then RadicallyCurly.com is our website. Danielle, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Congratulations again. I'm coming out to see you soon. I can't wait. Can't wait.
Thank you, Nina. Thank you. You can find, be sure to follow Radically Curly. I, it's just such an inspiring brand and, and definitely worth a follow. Uh, you can find Passion Squared on the socials at Passion Squared on the web at passionsquared.net. You can always message us. Our DMs are always open and you can email us at awesome at passionsquared.net. If you enjoy the pod, I would be so grateful if you, if you're listening on Apple, if you hit the review button, share your experience and share our episodes with your friends that you think would find value in the pod. I'm so grateful you all are here. Thank you so much for listening. Have a peaceful day wherever you are.